hi guys today we are going to be talking about some of the most popular games that you can access through your mobile device so i am going to be using an ipad which is why you will see an apple screen displayed but the apps that i'm going to talk about are available in the android app store as well so the first thing i'm going to want you to do is to go to your app store on an ipad or an iphone your app store is going to be a button with a blue background and a white A on it. If you're using an Android device, you will be looking for your Google Play Store instead of your App Store. So whenever you find that, go ahead and give it a tap and open up the App Store. A few things to know about games that you're downloading onto your mobile device. The people who create these games are interested in making money. And the way that they make their money off of these games is typically through ad revenue. So when you play these games, when you interact with any of them, you're going to have to watch advertisements. Some of these apps will have options where if you really like the game, you can purchase an ad free version for like three to seven dollars is normally the range that I see. But if you're not interested in spending that money, then you will have to watch the advertisements. Another thing is, is they try to make the ads really blend into the game. So sometimes it can be hard to spot how to exit out of an ad. It can also be hard to spot that an ad is what you're interacting with. And I'll show you a couple examples of ads that pop up while you play a game as we go through these different apps that I'm gonna highlight, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna have you do within your app store is go to your search function. So here on my iPad, it looks like a magnifying glass in the bottom right corner of the screen. I'm gonna tap that and it's gonna open up the search page, but yours might just have a bar at the top or bottom of the screen with that magnifying glass that you can type in that'll let you search. So let's tap the search bar. And the first game that I'm gonna highlight is Wordscapes. So Wordscapes is a puzzle-based word game. Um, it's just kind of made to help you exercise your vocabulary and your brain, keep you on your toes. You can see that Wordscapes is the top right option on my screen. You'll notice that mine has a little cloud with an arrow next to it. It's because I've already downloaded it onto this device and I have since deleted it so I could re-download it. But you'll see that other options have the word get to the right of the title of the game. So you would type either get but I'm gonna type the little cloud. And that's gonna start the download for our game. It can take a couple minutes to download. It's best to be connected to your Wi-Fi network in order to do it quickly, okay? If you're ever interested in learning more about the app that you're looking at, you can tap the name of the app and it will pull you to a profile page that tells you more about it. So this tells me the ratings of the game, um, what age it's appropriate for, farther down, it'll even give reviews from other people. It'll even tell you who makes the game and things like that. At the very bottom, uh, Apple is even recommending different games that you might like to try based on this one. But back at the top again, you can see that my little cloud that turned into a spinning circle now says open. That means the app is downloaded onto my iPad and I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. These games really want you to play for as long as possible. So they're really good about creating a tutorial for you to follow as you learn the different functions of the game. As you can see right now, it's telling me that I should swipe the word cat. And now great, now add the word act. Well done. So that was the first level of Wordscapes. It starts out really easy with three letter words, four letter words get up to some pretty long words. The farthest I've ever gotten in Wordscapes is like the high 100s and that takes a little bit of time. Okay so I'm going to play through a couple of puzzles and then that way I can show you what some of the ads are and you can see a little bit more of what a tutorial looks like as we go through the app. See, here's part of the tutorial is popping up, explaining some of the buttons to me. If you get stuck, if you need a hint, I got it. You can see that the game just gave me a reward. It says I earned 25 coins. A lot of these games have in-game currency. That's another way that they make revenue is you can buy different items in different games that help you win. So here on the top right hand corner of my screen, you'll see a shopping cart with 225 cents that I've got. If I click on the shopping cart, I can open up the store for the game where you can spend real money to buy in-game items. 
one thing that you want to do is make sure you're not spending too much on games. You might hear a lot of that. And look here in the middle of the screen, no more ads for $5.99. So if you get really sick of the ads and you really love Wordscapes, six bucks can make them go away. So you see the store can go on for a little bit farther. Uh, and some of the items that they're trying to sell me, I don't really know what they do yet. But like I said, as you get farther into the game, you will have you will have tutorials on how to use those items. Oh, I can even earn free coins. I can watch a video, which is an advertisement. I can look at offers, which I honestly don't know what that does because it doesn't seem like anything that I would be interested in. And you can also take surveys to earn in-game uh, coins as well. The thing with surveys is remember, it is collecting personal data from you in the forms of your likes and interests. So just be careful about how much you tell people about yourself. Don't really want to watch an ad because I'm having fun playing the game. So I'm gonna exit out. So while I'm in the level here, on the top left-hand corner of my screen, you can see a back button, and that goes to the main page of the beginning of the game. What you'll find here are a few different functions that a lot of games have in common. The big one being the gear in the top left-hand corner. This is where I can change things like the, how noisy it is, if there's any background music playing, I can restore my purchases. I can even connect the game to my Facebook so that I can share my progress with my friends. So let's go ahead and close out of Wordscapes and go back to our app store. So we're gonna open the app store again. And the next game that we're going to search, since we've already done a word game, let's do a number game, Sudoku. I'm sure you're all familiar with the paper version of this game. The cool thing about getting an app that lets you do this means that you can play it for longer, you can have as many puzzles as you want. Uh, and there are different ways that it lets you interact with the app that mimics the paper. So let's download Let's just pick this one with the really high ratings here. Um, I'm gonna pick the middle left option, sudoku.com brain something. Let's see, sudoku.com slash brain games. All right, and now that that app has downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and click open again. And it's gonna start us off. What you're seeing right here is a, please read and accept our terms and privacy policy, which set out the terms of use of our app and explain how we process your information, including how you can exercise your privacy rights. Otherwise, see the options available to you. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and accept it because I'm showcasing this uh, privacy rights is the same thing, or terms and services are the same thing that you're going to agree with with almost any website that you use. It's asking now if it can send me notifications. I always say no because I don't want these games to be bothering me because they will take advantage of that and bother you a lot. Um, looks like they're doing a special themed event. That's great. But we are here to play Sudoku, so I'm just gonna click new game. Oh, I want easy. All right, and here's that tutorial that pops right up, how to play. And I can scroll through a couple different pages to tell me how to play Sudoku. Select a cell, then tap a number to fill in the cell. Turn on the notes mode to add and remove notes. That's a good one because I take a couple tries to get through a Sudoku puzzle. So, I can tap on my squares, I can enter in numbers. Since this is the easy mode, it is filling in the options for me as I go. Oh, I made three mistakes and lost the game. I didn't know that that was an option. And, now that I finished one game and messed up, they're gonna have me watch an ad. So you might find a Sudoku app that you like better than this one. I just clicked on one of the higher rated ones. Um, again, this is kind of what all of those ads look like that apps try to show you in between um, where they're usually highlighting another game that you can play. You have to sit through it for a certain amount of time. So when this one is done, which will be anywhere from like 10 to 15 to 30 seconds, an X is gonna pop up on the screen. And there it is in the top right. And I'll just click it and get rid of that ad. So now I can restart the puzzle. I can play as long as I want. I can see there's a couple options. Again, at the top of the page, there's that gearbox where there's settings, how to play, about, help, remove ads, and restore purchases. Oh, remember how much, remove ads. Oh, see, I can remove ads for $5 on this game. But let's get rid of that. So you can play unlimited Sudoku for five bucks. A little bit cheaper than a Sudoku book uh, and more readily accessible at the moment. Just another option for you. So let's go ahead and close Sudoku and go back to our app store. So the next app or style of app, I should say, that I'm gonna highlight for you is trivia apps. One of the most popular trivia apps is called Trivia Crack. 
It's a really fun app, but it's gotten a little more complicated since the last time I played it. Click that cloud so I can download the app again. I'm gonna let it load and then we open up, we're gonna talk about it a little bit because it's gotten a little more confusing since the last time I clicked it. Trivia Crack would like to send you notifications. No thank you, not interested, don't allow. So this is the main screen that you will see when you open Trivia Crack for the first time. The reason that it's asking for your email address is because it creates a personal profile for you so you can play other players who use the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new account and open up Trivia Crack. This is going to start the tutorial. And like I said, these games do a really good job of walking you through what you're doing. So we can tap here to start a game. And then we can go ahead and pick which kind of game we want to play. I'm gonna go ahead and click classic. The next part is finding an opponent. Uh, you can click for a button to be assigned a random opponent. Otherwise you can even pick from among your friends if you link to something like a Facebook account. But now that we've selected random opponent, it's going to give us an option to play our game. And we'll click play now and be matched randomly with someone else who plays the game as well and start some trivia. You can see it's already walking us through the tutorial, spin the wheel, we'll get assigned a category, and then from there we'll be given a question. Let's see what our question is. Who is the first president of the US? George Washington. Easy peasy. Now it's giving us an option to share the question and let them know if it was boring or fun. And here it's giving us an in-game reward called the gem. Again, we're talking about an in-game currency. You can always spend those in the game on something else and you can purchase them using real money. But since we've played with that opponent now, we're gonna get matched with another one. You play through different rounds with different opponents and you can come back to different games as you play. So we're gonna spin the wheel again and get assigned another category where we'll be given another question. History again. Let's see what we get. Mm, this one's a little bit harder, but I'm gonna go with Ming. Very good. Again, it's that same screen where I can share the question. I can say if it's boring or fun, but we're still playing against this player and we're gonna spin again. We will get to keep spinning until we get a question wrong and then it'll be the other person's turn, which is why you leave games and then come back again later. Oh, this is an easy one. Definitely Scooby-Doo. All right, and since we got it right, we're gonna spin again and we will just keep going in the same fashion until we get a question wrong. What is a racket and pickleball called? If only I had taken the learn to play pickleball class at the Urbandale Senior Rec Center, I would know the answer, but I'm gonna guess that it's called the pickler. And I am wrong. So wrong answer, I lose a turn and wait for my opponent to answer. And it looks like it is gonna give me an ad. Again, this ad is how these game makers make revenue. I know that you can buy an ad-free version of this game as well. Trivia Crack is a really fun game because it keeps you challenged and it has a bunch of different categories that you can look at and learn from. And you can play with almost anyone else in the world. That's why I really like the game. But now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and go on back to our app store. The really cool thing about the App Store is just the fact that there is a game for any type of interest on there. You want to play an arcade game, there's arcade games. You want to play Jeopardy, there's Jeopardy. Wheel of Fortune is there too. Who wants to be a millionaire? You can even find regular tabletop card games that you would play available in the App Store. I hope that this video has enabled you to explore your App Store and your Google Play Store a little bit more and try and find a game that you will enjoy playing. You don't have to play these games every day, you don't have to play them all the time, but sometimes it's nice to have something to go back to and interact with. There is even a home decorating game, and I think that one is pretty fun as well. I would highlight it, but it's already a pretty long video. So if you have any questions, go ahead and try and leave a comment and we will get to as many people as we can. Otherwise, I'll see you for the next video. Thanks guys.